This is Standing Watch. And now, Evangelist Norbert Link. Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to our Standing Watch program. Will Israel strike Iran soon? Is, as we are saying in our title of the program, a window for Israel to strike Iran very short. Stars and Stripes wrote on March 3. Iran is seeking sophisticated new air defense systems from Russia, called S-400s, that Israeli officials believe will narrow the window for a potential strike on Tehran's nuclear program. Russia hasn't said publicly it will supply the weapons, but Moscow and Tehran have drawn closer since Moscow's invasion of Ukraine. It would take less than two years for the S-400s to be operational. The longer you wait, the hardest that becomes, Benjamin Netanyahu said of a strike on Iran as a at a security conference in Tel Aviv last week. We have waited very long. I can tell you that I will do everything in my power to prevent Iran from acquiring nuclear weapons, he said. Concern has grown over Iran's nuclear work since international monitors detached uranium enriched to 84% purity, just below the 90% needed for weapons. By the end of 2023, Iran will have enough uranium enriched to 60% to produce 10 bombs. I repeat, 10 bombs by the end of the year. Others give even a less optimistic viewpoint. Israel continues to hope the US will take the lead on any possible strike. And while the Biden administration hasn't ruled out military action, it prefers diplomacy. It appears that Israel will strike Iran with or without American help and support. But this time, not everything may go as well as hoped for by Israel. The Bible tells you that Israel will receive a wound, apparently some military defeat, and that before the beginning of the so-called Great Tribulation. Thomson and Reuters wrote on March 5, Israel rebuffed as unworthy on Sunday comments by the UN nuclear watchdog chief that any Israeli or US attack on Iran's nuclear facilities would be illegal. Netanyahu told his cabinet, outside what law? Is it permissible for Iran, which openly calls for our destruction, to organize the tools of slaughter for our destruction? Are we forbidden from defending ourselves? We are obviously permitted to do this, he said. Of course, we should realize that the UN is deeply antagonistic towards Israel and to an extent also the United States. Israel Today wrote on March 6. Is Israel about to strike Iran's nuclear facilities? It sure looks that way. The Jewish state has been preparing for years for such an eventuality, and now it appears the time has arrived. A military analyst for Israel's largest newspaper said that his sources in the Ministry of Defense revealed that the Americans were concerned that Israel was about to launch a surprise attack on Iran without coordinating beforehand with Washington. U.S. officials warned that Iran could have enough material for a nuclear bomb in about two weeks. Two weeks. In other words, Iran is about to become a nuclear state, and it's now or never, the article states. But it's not only an attack by Israel on Iran, which is of concern to many. It's also the possibility that Iran will strike Europe. Yes, you have heard that correctly, that Iran will strike Europe and the West. The Telegraph wrote on March 9. For most of the past decade, British security officials, when asked to rank hostile states that threaten our national well-being, have put Russia in first place, with China coming a close second. 
The suggestion, therefore, that the Islamic Republic of Iran is now regarded as posing the second most potent threat to Britain in security circles shows just how much progress the Ayatollahs have made in developing their military strength, while the rest of the world has been distracted by the tragic events unfolding in Ukraine. Western security officials have been obliged to revise their assessment of the Iranian threat following the alarming revelation by nuclear inspectors that uranium particles enriched to 83.7% purity have been discovered in Iran's Fordo plant, constructed deep beneath a mountain so that it cannot be targeted by Western airstrikes. Experts are warning that Iran could have enough material for a nuclear warhead within two weeks, so they also repeat their concern. Apart from its nuclear aspirations, Iran has been working hard to develop an arsenal of ballistic weapons capable of hitting targets in the heart of Europe. There is evidence that Iran is increasing its terrorist activities in Europe. For far too long, the predominant view has been that the best way to contain the Iranian threat is to maintain a dialogue with the so-called moderates in the hope that it will result in improved ties with the West. Instead, all that has happened is that Iran has made significant advances in developing a nuclear threat, from acquiring weapons-grade uranium to building ballistic missiles capable of carrying nuclear warheads. The success of these developments, moreover, appears to have given the regime the confidence to adopt a more aggressive stance towards the West. One that, given the unpredictable nature of Iranian politics, must be a major cause for concern. Now, Newsmax added on March 9, the author of the Telegraph also said, Iran's deepening desire to intensify its confrontation with the US, the UK, and Western allies is evident from the support it has given Russia in the Ukraine conflict. Iranian drones have been involved in a number of attacks on Ukrainian infrastructure the author wrote. U.S. national security officials have warned that Iran is aiming to expand its military support by providing ballistic missiles. Security sources have already reported that Iran is supplying large quantities of bullets, rockets, and mortar shells to sustain the Russian war effort. And so, Iran is definitely a threat to Britain and most certainly to Israel. But Britain's and Israel's real enemy will be the United States of Europe. For instance, biblical prophecy indicates that Iranians will fight with Europe against Britain and Israel prior to Christ's return. Now, it is true, of course, that after Christ's return, Russia, China, other Far Eastern nations, and Iran will try to occupy the promised land, but God will intervene to stop them. But the ongoing confrontations between Europe and the UK can also be seen in the following developments, and I'm quoting now from Breitbart, dated March 6. The Brexit deal on Northern Ireland, negotiated by Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, was merely designed to placate the British public and will still leave the European Court of Justice with ultimate authority over the British province, the EU's top negotiator on the matter revealed in a leaked recording. Confirming fears expressed by Brexiteers and British Unionists in Northern Ireland, European Commission Vice President for Interinstitutional Relations and Foresight, what a title, was reportedly recorded stating that the deal struck by Prime Minister Sunak was intended to win favorable headlines in the British press, rather than actually regain sovereignty over Northern Ireland. He was saying, be under no impression that there will be a diminishing of the role of the European Court of Justice. We have been very clear from the beginning until the end, the role of the European Court of Justice as the sole and final arbiter of EU law stays in place. 
He said that any concession was more window dressing than anything else, insisting that Northern Ireland would still be under the effective rule of the EU rather than taking back control of its own sovereignty, as Prime Minister Rishi Sunak suggested. Just mere window dressing to placate the British people. Now, once the British people realize that they have been tricked again by Europe, they will not act too kindly in response. And so, lots of things are going on. We have prepared a free booklet, Middle Eastern and African Nations and Bible Prophecy. And this booklet has a lot to say about Iran and what the Bible prophesies about Iran and also other nations in Africa and the Middle East. So please ask for a free copy. And until next time, this is Norbert Link for the Standing Watch program. Standing Watch is a presentation by The Church of the Eternal God, P.O. Box 270519, San Diego, California, 92198. More information is also available at our website, eternalgod.org.